Shaka, from a Spurs perspective, going into this final, you thought, right, the dark shadow of Jose Mourinho has passed. Mm -hmm. We can turn the page on that era. Coming to this game, we've got nothing to lose. Let's give it all out there. Leave it all on the pitch and try and test this brilliant Manchester City side. They did nothing. Absolutely nothing. And, and this performance left me with far more questions and answers, not just about Spurs, but the thinking, Daniel Levy's thinking in, in hiring uh, Ryan Mason. Now, as you look at this performance, this 90 minutes was all about Jose Mourinho. Yet, you sack him just under a, a week ago. You're bringing a new young manager, and the expectation from someone like me looking in from the outside is that the football is going to be different, that he has a better... He is more in tune with the dressing room and some of the frustrations of players like Harry Kane and Heung-Min Son around Jose Mourinho's style. Yet everything about this game screamed Jose Mourinho. There was no departure from what we've seen of Spurs all season long and today. Was that tough, though, for Ryan Mason, considering you just have the team, what, a couple of days? Like, well, what do you expect? Well, but it, this is, this, I don't mean this as a criticism of Ryan Mason. He was thrown in at the deep end and had asked to do a job that clearly he was not prepared equipped or experienced to do. What else is he supposed to do in this situation? But you're Daniel Levy. You're tired of Jose Mourinho and that style. You feel that the dressing room is fractured around what he's asking so many players to do. You decide, even though, was it two years ago, you, you make this decision to bring in a manager who promises silverware. A week before the first cup final of that man manager's tenure, you decide to let him go. For what reason, I, at this point, I, it's hard for me to even offer an explanation. You then, have a, you then decide, okay, or you have a decision to make as to who inherits that hot seat. You want someone, you're going to guess, someone who is, is more in touch with the dressing room, mm -hmm. someone who will promise a, a different style of football, someone who will do things differently, changes create some kind of a knee-jerk reaction in a very talented squad and you look at who you have in your backroom staff. Ledley King, I'll offer you an out. Maybe Ledley does not want that hot seat. Maybe he doesn't want to be a first-team manager, a coach, even on a caretaker basis. You have two people working within your academy. You have Chris Powell with nearly 700 career games, who has managed three clubs, been caretaker twice, served as an assistant twice, and that's not including the role that he currently plays in Gareth Southgate's uh, English dressing room, in his backroom staff. And you have Ryan Mason, who has 145 career games, a handful of those at the Premier League level, no other coaching experience. You take a look at those two CVs, and we have to assume that Daniel Levy is a very intelligent man, given the things that he's accomplished in this game. How can anyone, apart from the obvious to me, make a case for Ryan Mason being the choice, given those two CVs sitting on your desk? I, I, and that is the frustration of people like me, who look at what's going on in the game, Look at who's been given chances to manage clubs and the frustrations and the arguments that come with it. And then you see Daniel Levy, a football man, do this, mm. given the glaring evidence before you. So, I've been on my soapbox for the last week, Dan, so excuse me. So now I look at Spurs, and while, I, while there is a lot of room for criticism around their performance. While maybe there may be room to criticize Ryan Mason, I, I don't think that that's his burden to bear. He did as best as he could, as best as someone with just as much managerial experience as you and me could do in that situation. Now, maybe we're hoping for the fairy tale that this young manager comes in against Pep Guardiola and somehow upsets, upsets the apple cart. And, but for one set piece and one incredible save from Zach Steffen, mm. maybe we have that story. 
That being said, I agree with you, Manchester City by far the better of the two teams, totally dominated, deserving of that win. But maybe there was a fairy tale. Now, again, if you are a football man, if you are in charge of one of world football's biggest names, you cannot hedge your bets on a fairy tale. And, and that, for me, is where Spurs went wrong. Not about Mason's setup, not about his tactics, not about his substitutions or any way that he lacks in, in, in comparison to, to Pep Guardiola, but simply... As a club, I have to question whether Spurs wanted to win this trophy at all. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.